We've been talking about condenser microphones, but there's a whole array of kinds of microphones that we use both on set and in the studio. I've got four microphones that are here that sort of reflect various polar patterns and different kinds of microphones. So let's check them out right away. First of all, we've got the DR747, that custom milk mic that I've had for years that I love. And this is the Ceramonic NV5 cardioid condenser microphone. This is the Rode M1 dynamic cardioid microphone. And this is the Rode NTR, which is a figure eight ribbon microphone. What? I know, it's weird, but I'll show you and you'll see why we use it. And it's cool. So let's first start. We've had a little experience with this one. This is our uh, 747. It's a condenser, so it suffers from plosives. And um, it's a cardioid, which means if I go over here like this, I lose it completely. I have to be right in front of it. If I talk over it or if I talk on uh, you know, off axis, I lose sibilance. And if I come too far back like this, I start losing it entirely. So, But that's the nature of your cardioid condenser. Now, the NV5 is also a cardioid condenser, but you can hear the radical difference between a large diaphragm condenser mic and a small diaphragm condenser mic. Small diaphragm condenser mics typically have a really sheeny, high-frequency push or, or bump, which is really, really great if you're, you know, wanting a lot of edge. You can hear, for those of you who understand what uh, hertz, you know, what being able to tell what hertz are, this is like a bump shelf from, you know, 6K and up. There's also a 2K zone here that's probably helping. And like all condensers, plosives are a problem. And especially with small diaphragm microphones, you know, if you thought the big diaphragm uh, condenser was sensitive, the small diaphragm condenser is even more sensitive. But this is a wonderful sounding microphone. It is a cardioid. So as I back up, it just completely vanishes. And if I talk off axis, I lose it completely. And this one is even more narrow because it's it also has these slats in it, you can see here like this, that help reject sound that's coming from the sides even more than a standard large diaphragm condenser. This is the Rode M1, a completely different sound because it is a dynamic microphone. There's no electronics. It doesn't need phantom power. It doesn't need anything else. It just works. And this is one of those things that's indestructible. And uh, it, it's a, it's got a really lovely sound, a nice rich quality for uh, your voice. And we use these on stage all the time. And because it's dynamic, it doesn't suffer from plosive problems. I mean, it's in there a little bit, but I'm hitting it way harder. Plosive problems. If I go to the NV5, Plosive problems. I did it with the same. It's it's a complete world of difference. Now they cheat with dynamic microphones, and I'll show you here. I'm just going to move this over so you can see. Kids, don't do this at home. You can unscrew this, and inside, I'm trying to do this without getting too crazy. Inside is another windshield, and this is also a windshield. The diaphragm of this is actually in this little red area here, and then the electronics come down from this. So it sort of has a built-in windscreen and another windscreen on top of it, plosives. But it still handles plosives very, very well. This is the Rode NTR. Now, this is the only ribbon mic that we have here. Well, what's a ribbon mic? Well, these have round diaphragms that transduce the sound pressure level into voltage. This doesn't. You can sort of see this plate right here. It's not actually a plate. It's a ribbon. And ribbons, are, this is a very, very sensitive ribbon, and it moves back and forth and creates the voltage the same way. Back in the old days, these were dynamic microphones. I know you're like, well, I thought that was a dynamic microphone. Well, it is a dynamic microphone with a round diaphragm. This, well, not this one, but the old ribbons were dynamic microphones with a ribbon diaphragm. They were very, very sensitive. So sensitive that if you hit them with enough plosive power, you would tear the ribbon, much less drop them. They were also extremely noisy, but they required no phantom power, and they were very, very sensitive and very, very warm. You can hear the difference in how beautiful and warm this microphone is as compared to the 747, which has a lot more energy and a lot more, it's a lot flatter frequency response. But this one is really wonderful for female vocals and males, male vocals that really are, or dialogue that have a lot of energy to it and you want to warm them up. One of the most amazing things about ribbon microphones is that they are fixed figure eight. And you're like, well, what's a figure eight? Figure eight polar pattern means that it picks up in the front and in the back 
the same. Now, this also has the, has the characteristics of a condenser microphone because it requires power, which is like it's this crazy hybrid. Well, all of the new ribbon microphones, they've gotten rid of the noise issues by adding phantom power. And all the Royer Lab microphones and this one and all the new modern uh, ribbon microphones, they have phantom power. So they're sort of this beautiful hybrid from condensers, cardioids, figure eights, and then of course ribbon technology. But check out what figure eight is like. So here's the front of it. And I'm just gonna turn this around here. Here's the back of it. Notice that it sounds almost identical. Check one, two, three, check one, two, three. Check one, two, three, check one, two, three. It has a little bit more warmth to the back, but watch what happens when I go to the side. If I go to the side, I'm completely dead. All you're hearing is the reflections of the room going like this. So. This is a figure eight. And if you're doing podcasting, a figure eight microphone can be a really great thing to have because in a pinch, a pinch with a plosive, you can record yourself and somebody else at the same time and get them all. (laughs) 